if it's not going to work, just drop into a low angle shoot, drop into a double leg, drop into a single leg. My name's Rick Spain, I'm a professional martial arts instructor and I've been teaching Wing Chun for 25 years, but I've been practicing it for 30. Okay, my name's Adam Washbourne, I'm a full-time martial arts instructor and I've been here for three and a half years, teaching for about two and a half of those uh, full-time. My name is Robert Botkos. I'm a full-time student here at the Wing Chun Kung Fu organisation and I've been training for about three years now. Technically Wing Chun means hope for the future or beautiful springtime and if you look at the historical references of how the style was developed, it was developed during the time of the Civil War in the Shaolin Temple and the system was named after that hope for the future. Um, if you look at the past masters who've really had a major influence on Wing Chun since it's become more of a, a public system in the sense that most people are aware of it, Yip Man would have to be the, one of the sort of driving forces to pushing it into the 20th century. Um, a great master in his own right. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when he retired or when he died, he was quite ill. And a lot of the information was getting lost because the last few generations of students didn't quite get what he was on about. But I was very fortunate that my master uh, is direct lineage under Yip Man, William Chung is probably now today one of the greatest and one of the most knowledgeable Wing Chun masters on the planet. And he was a direct descendant from Yip Man, lived with Yip Man in his own home and became a full-time disciple. So Yip Man chose very carefully as to who he would pass on the pure system because there's a couple of different strains. This academy was created in the late 80s and I have been teaching Wing Chun in this academy for over 20 years but um, I, I started training in Wing Chun in the 70s with my master and uh, you know I achieved my red belt with him in about 1990 and, and uh, you know, I've been teaching ever since. It's been a full-time profession for me since I left school. In our particular version of Wing Chun, we've employed other systems and brought in some of their strengths uh, to enhance our own system because if you look back at the way the system was designed, I believe that we are staying very true to its original philosophy, which was to, at the time it was extracting information from as many different styles as possible. So that's how it was evolved and developed. So we've continued with that by bringing in some boxing skills, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to enhance our ground game. Uh, we've brought in knife fighting as opposed to just our traditional butterfly swords. So we've continually sort of brought in different skill sets to keep the system evolving, which I feel is, as I said before, true to its original philosophy of evolution and adaptation. The wing Principles of Wing Chun can be summarised down to watch the centre line, uh, but don't obsess over it. Try and move to the blind side if you can. Uh, watch the elbows and knees during combat and pin and trap them at any possible chance. Avoid fighting force with force, but if you have to, so be it. And touch reflexes is in learn to feel what your opponent's going to do before they do it. And that's pretty much just a summary of them. Well, to, to get to the point where you know the whole curriculum, it's 10th level, which is gold belt, but then there are seven master's levels after gold belt to reach your red belt. Red belt is the highest, but once you've um, attained your gold belt, you pretty much have the whole curriculum, the empty hand curriculum, not including all the weapons. After, after gold belt, then all the weapons start coming into play, and yeah. We use all types of various equipment, um, you know, from punching bags to focus mitts, kick shields, um, we have empty hand forms, which are which are just using you know breathing breathing techniques and the the empty hand um, blocks and strikes, and then once you get to a little bit of a higher level, we go on to the wooden dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so the Wing Chun application for weapon defense would be, first off, you'd need to square off so you can assess the situation. Secondly, attack aggressively attack the weapon arm. Um, if it's a bat, for example, attack the arm that the bat's on. Put them down quickly, attack them on the ground, and take the weapon off them. That's, that's our way of, to, of handling weapons. When being faced with a knife, it's a, obviously a very dangerous situation. Um, if, for uh, instance, a straight thrust would be coming at you, you'd be wanting to capture the weapon-bearing limb and eliminate the threat of the knife, and then you'd want to hit the, hit the attacker fast and hard. Um, you'd want to control the weapon-bearing limb at all times. I'd say a good way to, to go from there would be to, to effect a takedown, and then... Um, disarm the assailant of their weapon and then use it on them if need be, you know, um, yeah. Okay, well if a person is standing toe to toe for instance and they throw a punch, um, Wing Chun, one of the principles of Wing Chun is to block and strike at the same time, so if someone was to throw a straight punch at you, you can block the straight punch with the puck sow and get a body shot into them and then you could say pivot off with a finger strike to the eyes and then follow up with a heel, heel and palm strike to the, to the jaw to finish them off and that would be a pretty effective defence against a straight punch. interested in learning it, I'd say, yeah, get into it. It's good fun and it's good for you. It's a great lifestyle, so go for it. Three, four. Give it a go. Uh, that's all I can say to any, anyone asks me, oh, what, what art should I do? I just say, look, give it a go. If you, if you don't like it, you've, you've lost nothing. Um, you know, that's about it. It's a lifestyle choice. Uh, obviously, you have the health benefits of fitness, flexibility, all of those things. Uh, the added benefits of good self-defense skills. But for me, it's generally like I look at it holistically as a, as a lifestyle choice that interacts with my other um, aspects of my life. You know, diet, nutrition is important, and just general exercise as a, as a way of living.